Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Tier 3 Racing Action. My name is Strifium, filling in for Domi and Psycho this evening, and I hope everyone is doing well, as we are now jumping into what is the penultimate round of the fifth MRL season, and it is here for round 14. We are in Mexico. My oh my, what a circuit and what racing we've already seen around here this week, not just for the Tier 4 division yesterday, but for the Americas as well. And while we're back to Mexico City, the Autodromo de Hermanos Rodriguez, and well, a very, very serious racing circuit at that here in Mexico, a very fast racing circuit. And before we get to another very quick round through Brazil, round out the season but i am very excited to jump into this division and well i have to say when we take a look at the standings things are extremely tight especially for this runners up position you take a look at carbon racer and wisp right now 139 points for carbon racer and then we have wisp with 127 there in third crampy pretty well clinching that driver's championship right here it would be a very very i think it's mathematically his i don't think anyone else can get it so congratulations to crampy for clinching that championship and then we have a serious constructors bout happening right now between the mercedes squad and the williams squad so it's 245 points for the mercedes squad then we have williams 237 so a lot of fighting and urban racer coming across to say he does have a chance and a slim chance at that but he is going to take everything he can into this race and so at that we are going to get ready to go racing here in just a few moments time but of course extremely excited to see how all of these racers do here in the 14th round we love to see everybody coming through to race i think we have a near full grid today if not a full grid and i always love to see it i think you all love to see it and i can't wait to jump in and go racing here Just getting everybody now readied up and we'll be ready to go into 18 minutes of qualifying followed by what is 36 laps around this very quick circuit the 36 laps they go by quick and you know what else goes by quick the tire degradation that's right the tires can shred here especially on the soft so we might see some two stops we might even see some one stops we saw a little bit of both yesterday in the america's tier two race Alrighty. Welcome to the qualifying. This is what we've all been waiting for now. The entrance into what will be a very epic race. I can only imagine, given the skill level of the drivers in this Tier 3 division. It's been exciting races all season long here for Tier 3. Even those that I wasn't able to broadcast i managed to catch some of the clips and things that were taken during those races and of course the replays they're on youtube keep me in the loop Hey. here we go welcome to mexico they do have that roll of the dice for the dynamic weather a little bit of cloud in the sky just over across the way and I could be mistaken about the cloud actually no i think there is a cloud there but of course no rain and with no rain a sigh of relief i imagine for all of these racers i imagine we'll get a weather report in a moment's time Henners, first out of the pit lane, representing the late Frank Williams today for Williams with the hashtag RIP Frank. And of course, if you have not yet heard, and how could you not have heard, the founder of Williams Racing, Sir Frank Williams, has fortunately passed away. So, going paying tribute to him across the motorsports world.
entered and out, pushing through Sector 2. Twenty racers with us on the grid today. I'll take you through the timing tower. We have Henners in the Williams, of course. Gabism for Red Bull. We have Max O'Connor in the Aston Martin with us, as well as Kane Gitchvan. And I have always mispronounced his name. We spoke about it. And I have opted to continue mispronouncing his name at his permission. He has said it's okay. <laughs> Carbon Racer, of course, in the Mercedes as Henners begins his flyer with the rear wing wide open into turn one. We have Rackety with us in the Haas. Puki for Ferrari and Sid in the Alfa Romeo down in eighth on the timing tower for the moment. Ifun in ninth. Or is it Waifun? I don't know. These names that get trickier to pronounce all the time. All the time, all the time. Jose Manuel in the Ferrari, of course, and we have Artex with Red Bull. John, one of the many great MRL OGs here in the Tier 3 division, just as Henners. He'll be in the Alpha Tauri this evening. John, and I am referring to Henners, of course, being one of the original members of the Misfits. Big shout out to those guys. We have Backrow, Driver DNB. Happy to see Driver in the grid. Absolutely love seeing Driver in the grid. He's for Alpine, of course. We have Cries. In the McLaren. Henders coming through the final sector now. We'll get a proper lap through the circuit in a moment, but we're still going through the grid. Edu in the partnering Williams. Dark for Haas. Maka for Mercedes. Wisp in the Alfa Romeo. And Yasko for Alfa Tari Henners. A 15 1 2 6 his first run of the evening. Wisp a 15.570, Dark a 15, or excuse me, a 16.375 as more times cross the line. Max O'Connor a 15.147. We do 15.993. Right? 15.386 in the McLaren. going to be a very busy qualifying a quick lap means more laps potentially can be set Mac across his sixth right behind his teammate carbon racer so the Mercedes running on the third row at the moment Artex coming through the final section of circuit right now pushing to get a lap on the board Utilizing all of the inside curbing there, and it's good for provisional pole position. A 14.827 from Artex on the soft compound tires in that charging bowl. Driver DNB right now navigating out of turn three. Prize in the McLaren pushing second position here as Kane enters the pit lane behind driver pushing through sector two. Forgive me throughout the broadcast if there's any pauses or anything like that. It'll just be me taking time to keep hydrated. I am feeling a little under the weather today as to why I am able to commentate as I'm home <laughs> today. More times coming across the line. Driver DNB, it was a 16.465. And I thought I had seen another time come across there, but it was deleted. Sid, that's a crash on entry to the pit lane. That is not what you want to be doing in a qualifying session. What? 
happen to that Alfa Romeo? Not a lot going on right now with Mr. Backrow. He is not pushing this exit. Yasko, however, is. Right now, provisional pull of 14827 from Artex in the Red Bull. Many drivers on outlaps presently. Max O'Connor will be looking to improve a 15147. Try and beat out headers. Big slide out there from Yasko, and this is going to compromise the lot, but not enough to prevent him from shooting into the top 10 here. 15.754 coming out of the Alpha Tauri. Wisp currently flying with a major improvement in hand through out of Sector 1. He did set his first lap on the medium compound tires, now flying on the softs. Now into sector three, nearly eight tenths the improvement in hand for the Swedish driver as he races through the third sector. Coming out of the final turn to the line, tight to the inside. It's gonna be good for provisional pull of 14.586 from the Swede, very nice run there for him. And we'll have to see who else can come through and contest it. Rackety right now on an invalidated run, looking to go again. Max O'Connor flying once again. It looked like he may have had an issue on his previous run as Artex has begun as well. Many racers on the move looking for improvements. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the session. Bit of desync or rubber banding, at the very least, some lag from Rackety right now in the Eurokali Haas. Not a bad qualifying so far. Things quite tight, especially when you look all the way to seventh position from pole, seven tenths the margin. And while I say that, Carbon Racer, excuse me, jumps into second position provisionally. Artex, formerly on pole in this session. What is he able to put forth here across the line? It is good enough to beat out the Swedish racer of Wisp as it is. A 14.407 from Artex. Maka, 14 triple eight coming in on the rear of Carbon Racer, minus one position as Cries is between the two Mercedes right now in the McLaren. Henners, does he have something to say about these top three? The Williams Racer to the line now will find an improvement of two tenths, but it's not good enough to do what he wanted, which was to jump into that top five at the very least. A 14 909, his best run here so far. on a flyer right now one of the only racers 
yet to set a time here. At the very least, the only racer who is flying who is yet to set a time. Yeah, if anyone's wondering where Crampy is, unfortunately, he has suffered an injury IRL. As far as I'm aware, Buki goes 8th quickest here in Mexico as his teammate Jose Manuel for the evening will begin. Jose through sector three. Really wanted to get a time on the board, and as is Rackety, who has just begun. We'll go on with Rackety in a moment. B14 for Jose. Rackety in the house now on the move. Left-hander entering the tricky S's section. A very fast-flowing sector two here in Mexico City. Now into the right-hander that will take you through into what I like to call the stadium section here, where all of the viewers and attendants get a beautiful view and look at your vehicle. Rackety now, 15th position, 15.556 from the Brit. Yasko with issues coming out of turn three. Max O'Connor on the move, as is Kanae. McLaren. Showing a minor improvement, not minor, I suppose, at this phase, nearly a tenth in hand. We come into sector three, what's it going to be? Nearly three tenths, so that's a major, major amount of time that could slot him as far as P5 right now. Here we go to the line now, the McLaren. Drop some time there. He was looking a little bit better off coming out of Sector 2. However, coming out of Sector 3, you can see it was only good for a 14.914. Which, in all fairness, is extremely quick, but not quick enough to get into that top five. Max O'Connor slow up right now. Typhoon coming through the final section, looking to begin a run as well. Both Aston Martins yet to give us what they got for their final appearances. Shy of two minutes remaining in session. Everybody on outlaps right now.
Kane doubled up his runs and he goes fourth. Solid run there from the McLaren racer. Tire wear in Mexico can very well play a role here. I'm curious to see what the strategies are going to unfold like in the back 10. Yesterday we saw one driver opt for hards. It was the driver in 14th position starting. That driver did finish 10th, all things said and done. Artax into the pit lane. And I do believe that might be the end of his session. I don't think he'll have time to get out and get any other kind of run in at the point where we are. Here comes Dark. Crossing the line. 1.4 seconds. An improvement. 14.9 for him. This brings the gap, ladies and gentlemen, from 1st down to 15th. Realistically, 16th position. 1.1 of a second. Enters. Takes the checkered flag in third. Rackety as well. 15.556 is where he will land. Best things off. Maka into the mix. 14.484 for Mercedes. Catching that checkered flag in second position provisionally. Wisp is looking to find an improvement, and he is just five milliseconds away from his personal best sector on that last run. It's going to be critical for Wisp here to find everything in this last turn. And he finds a lot. He doesn't just find well. There goes Carbon Racer. 14318. He jumps Wisp after Wisp jumped Maka and Artex. Wow. 14318. Nearly a tenth separating him and Wisp right now, and Artex isn't too far either because it's two milliseconds that Wisp got Artex by. What a lineup. 16 drivers within one second on the timing tower. And we have, realistically, 12 drivers at that 5 tenth mark, that half a second mark. very very fast racers in this division and I'm happy to be back commentating it for Carbon Racer taking pole position here 14-318 the fastest run from the Brit and we have Wisp lining up second position on that front row in the Alfa Romeo a 14-405 just shy of a tenth on the rear of Carbon and we have Artex who is also there in the top three the Spaniard the Red Bull Racer, a 14.407, just two milliseconds shy of Wisp's time there as Wisp got that one in late. Well, not late, but right at the curtain drawing. Same with Carbon Racer there. Some stunning laps there at the end of the session to get themselves into position. And, well, away we go now into a 36-lap campaign around Mexico. My name's Strifium here from Canada. I hope you're all enjoying the broadcast here so far. And of course, if you're new, be sure to help us out and hit that follow button. Thanks a lot. All right. So no rain, which if you know me is kind of disappointing because I want to see rain. But I imagine these guys don't. 
everyone wants to have clear skies ahead of them. Simple navigating, no torrential conditions in sight. However, rain or no rain, this is Mexico. It's a very fast circuit, and it can be very, very interesting into turn one. It's a long run into the first turn, and there is a ton, a ton of space on the straight heading into the turn, meaning that there could very, very well be a safety car in the opening lap of this race, not only because of turn one, but because of the turns that follow in through into sector two. We'll just have to see how everybody navigates the first sequence of turns here for tier three. Racers on the grid getting ready ahead of the race now. Formation underway. Once again, the lineup, the grid starting the 14th round of the tier three division in MRL season five. We have on pole position, Carbon Racer in the Mercedes, lining up next to him in the Alfa Romeo on the front row. It is Wisp, the Swedish racer for Alfa Romeo. Of course, wanted pole, but Carbon Racer took it right at the end. Artex starting third for Red Bull. Very solid showing from him in qualifying, and I think it was a very solid showing from all of these guys in qualifying, considering all the way up the grid, we had one second less. The margin. With that said, we have Maka, Cries, Henners, John, Kane, Jose, Backrow, Edu, Gabism, Max O'Connor, Dark, Pookie, Waifun, Rackety, Yasko, Driver DNB, and then Sid, who unfortunately had issues in qualifying, seeing him not able to set a lap. You'll notice Henners today with the hashtag RIP Frank. And of course, if you haven't heard and you don't know, well, the founding father of Williams Racing, the late Sir Frank Williams, of course, passed away this previous weekend. And it is very, very tragic across motorsports to hear of his passing. A legend, true legend. The Henners driving the Williams, representing as best he can today. Now, Carbon Racer, he's got a job to do. Statistically, he is still in this championship fight. He needs to take two wins back-to-back -back here, and, well, Crampy is injured. He will not be back to racing this season, unfortunately, and let's see if Carbon Racer has what it takes to get two wins back-to-back, -back. and I think he needs a fastest lap in both races to mathematically become champion. With that said... It is an uphill battle because look who's next to him. Wisp, Artex, Maka, all in close contention. Cries is here and Henners is here as well as Sid assumes the final grid position here in Mexico ahead of round 14. Three, four, five red lights on the grid now as these drivers are already away. It was a fast light sequence. Who's got the best launch? Wisp has had a turbocharged launch ahead of Carbon Racer already before we even get into turn one right now. Carbon Racer already on the power, nearly 40% used, trying to fight back this amazing start from the Swedish Racer in behind them right now. Some more positions exchanging as Henners has also had a fantastic start in the Williams. He's up into fourth position. Wow, Jean. Hunting with Maka. Maka has not had the best start in that Mercedes. He's dropped back a couple of places as now Carbon Racer under threat from Artex looking to hold off. And this battle is going to give Wisp a way out. This is so wild. This race start is so intense. Carbon Racer, Artex. Artex is into second position. And this is not the start Carbon Racer needs if he wants to win a championship. That's for sure. train, if you will, is now in formation. A little bit of a gap with Gabbyism and Jose Manuel, the medium runner, potentially creating a second train there. He needs to break down that one second barrier to Jose Manuel ahead, but of course the tires and the traction for Jose Manuel are in favor, and he is hunting down the McLaren ahead. Right now we're playing a game of who's going to pull the trigger first in this lineup as the train is 
really formed. 1.1 the second gap to Wisp. And that cannot be the gap when we get to lap three. Or Wisp will pull away, and that is not good news for Carbon Racer in third right now. As Cries and Henners are exchanging the McLaren on the inside through turn five. Back through six and seven now on the inside for the McLaren. Still looking to take that position from the Williams. And it is Maka trying to inherit back into the points further where he started. He started this race in fourth. He needs to get back there as he sits in sixth. Buki, back row exchanging. Mediums right now versus the softs, not paying off. Not their time just yet. Small gap starting to form here. Notably, Artex does not have DRS, and I don't believe Carbon has it. Well, we won't have it until the later stage of the lap, excuse me, but... You look at these gaps and it makes you nervous. Carbon Racer in between with a near one second gap. Oh, one second now, excuse me. Crucially right now, Artex flowing through sector two. We just come through the detection point. I think he got it. Yes, he did. He snagged it, and Carbon Racer doesn't have it either. So this is going to be a very critical moment for Artex. He needs to push with everything he's got to close Wisp before the long straight here. Carbon Racer doing what he can, but cries. Carbon Racer, they're going to be under threat from this train shortly. Uh-oh. Wisp has broken that DRS already. Very critical in the Swedish driver's lead of this race right now. John tight to the rear of Maka. The old train. There's little trains all over this grid right now. But the biggest one, of course, on the rear of podium points in that fight for third. Wisp in the gap to Artex behind is growing. 1.5 nearly. He already has a back marker ahead in Waifun. Things tense in this train, especially on this opening stint. Nobody wanting to burn rubber too much. You do. Besting Sid. Max O'Connor picks up a three second time penalty and he joins the penalty club as now the fifth member here out of the 20 racers with us on this grid. I wonder how many penalties we'll have at the end. Mexico, always known for its potential penalties. Back row, dark. DRS and utilization for both racers right now. Dark around the outside, at the very least looking to get a toe around, does not. And back row holds 12th for the moment. Both racers, will they have DRS again? Yes. picks up three seconds dark picks up three seconds and the club that was once five is now seven back row with a slide giving dark a really big opportunity but i think dark had to maybe slow down on the rear to correct after he saw that mistake
Carbon Rays are under threat from Cries. Third position in contest. And here we go now. Cries to the outside in turn one. He is going to get that move done. Carbon Racer trying to glide through, coast through on the brakes to just hold as best as he can, but it's still going to be DRS for that McLaren. There's great news if your Henner is here. He might put a move on. He thinks better of it. Artex and Wisp, that gap. Less than a second once again. I ask myself, did Wisp make a mistake? Or is Artex turning up the heat? Tight train, pressure cooker, if you will. Jose Manuel within that one second, just dancing in and around that one second on Kanae. Max O'Connor, 1.6 on the rear in that final points paying position with an entire train of his own behind him. Maka on the battery. Henners right in front. Of course, Henners right now, the car between the two Mercedes on track, and Maka looking to alleviate some of the pressure on Carbon Racer here. A little bit of a snap for Henners. There is a yellow flag on circuit. That's one of the Ferraris. That's Pookie who has had an issue on the exit of turn one. There's a wheel-to-wheel -wheel exchange behind him. That's driver DMB and Yasko having a wheel-to-wheel -wheel exchange and driver getting a little bit further loose. A little bit of contact there with Pookie. No clear intention behind it. Prize right now in third position. Carbon Racer with an opportunity, surely, to get through into a position ahead. The long run here. Definitely not close enough. Not a lot of battery for Carbon Racer. He used almost 40% just into turn one, fighting off Wisp's race start. Driver there, fortunately displaying a fit after his issue with Sid, or if it was Pookie, excuse me, in turn one. Virtual safety car, I do believe, is as a result of the debris on track. I think I just saw a bit of a concertina there. I think I just saw Carbon Racer hit somebody. Max O'Connor picked up a drive through. That is not how you want to be finishing out a VSC. Prizes in for mediums. Okay. Very interesting matter of event, or chain of events, I'll say, in the last few moments in this race. We're on lap 9 out of 36. Henner's continuing to keep the pressure with Carbon Racer. Maka in the train as well. And Henner's continuing to exceed as well. 
six seconds now in penalties here. Let's see what happens now with this undercut coming out of Hanners and Carbon Racer. Artex needs to push, and will he respond immediately? Big question. Dark up into fifth position on the rear of Gabby's in the two medium runners right now. Three seconds for Dark in this fight in penalties. Well, that's six seconds now for Dark, and it would appear that as soon as I switch to racers in the past few moments at the very least, they pick up penalties. Here, let's try. Gabbyism. <laughs> 5.7 seconds for Gabbyism, however, on the rear of Jean, who has now come into the pit lane. Dark. Gabbyism. Nice overtake there for Dark with the assistance of the DRS, and you can see that rear wing just closing as Gabbyism gets on the brakes. Fry's ninth position right now as Waifun racking up the points in the penalty department as he has accumulated now 18 seconds for his I want to say he was evading fast movers there dark under threat from Gabbyism right now just looming in now Thirteen seconds the gap between Artex and Dark and the soft runner really pushing the stint right now. I wonder if this is going to be a one stop in the end for Mr. Artex. Maybe he's banking on a safety car. It looks like Artex just picked up three seconds. He did. I think there was two drivers back to back that picked up penalties there, but I think most notably Artex was one of them. Oh. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Dark has come through and taken down nine seconds.
Ooh, some close battling action here. Sid and Henner's wheel to wheel right now. Henner's looking for a way around the outside. He gets the switch back through as Sid goes deep. And man, oh man, he gets that done neatly. Carbon Racer looking to follow him through and will do so. Tenth position for the Mercedes. Sid, not in a good position right now on the 12 lap old mediums. However, he has gained nine positions in this race. Eight, excuse me, as Jean navigates into 11. Gabby Zim is in. Onto the soft compound tires. He beats Artex in. Artex still holding 13 seconds over, e over Dark, who is currently engaged with not one, but two racers. Wisp into second position now. This is where you really want to start to watch that gap. Three lap old mediums, 13 lap old softs. Wisp is now going to begin to break it down. about at that halfway point in the race and we've had quite a few exchanges for position as now Artex is finally into the pit lane and he's going for that set of medium compound tires now. Wisp coming out of the final turn. We'll get Artex. As will Dark. Prize and Artex. It's going to be wheel to wheel coming into turn one. He will not concede this. A lot of temperature in the tires for Cries right now. Artex holding tight to that apex. This is a battle. Quickly back to Carbon Racer. Wheel to wheel. Carbon Racer. Ooh, around the outside. Back through on the inside of five. Tight racing here between the Mercedes and AlphaTauri, but it's Carbon Racer through into sixth for now. 14 lap old mediums well held for Yasko there. A tight fight. Maka, Henners, Jean. Oh, there's a snap for Yasko. Here come Maka and Henners. A little bit of contact there for Maka. A little bit of contact, almost setting him wide and off. Race critical for him to navigate past the Alpha Tauri right now and catch up with Henders here as we come through out of the final turn. Yasko says you can have him, but it might be a little too late. No DRS? Yes, DRS, which is critical for the Mercedes. And he's all thanks to Yasko for that DRS because you can see the gap right now. It would not have been enough to Henners. Still very well not be enough. A good race. Hard race for a lot of these guys. Edu, John. The hards for Edu, and I, I don't recommend these tires. Holding right now, however, on John. Only driver yet to stop. Dark. If you had an issue, that is Yasko coming outside of the S's section.
Backrow, Gabism, tight racing here. Gabism looking at back row, but there's not enough of a gap for him to push through. Gabism struggling there. Under threat from Jose. I really have to say there has been some great races throughout this grid. Some great battles. Some great fights. It's been an awesome race. Speaking of fights, Dark and Artex right now, they're doing a little bit of fighting of their own right now. Artex is on his better tires. Dark says, I don't care who you are. I'm going to sit this car right in front of you absolutely as long as I can. And he does so. And finally, Artex gets him for second. cries send it no thinks better of it for now he knows into turn one he has an opportunity here especially considering dark is on his starting tires DRS, but no battery in utilization right now. At the very least, overtake not being utilized, and cries will blow by dark. Enters Carbon Racer now exchange. Carbon Racer sixth position. strategy at play here between Wisp and Artex enters picks up three second time penalty climbing the ladder now 15 seconds for the Englishman Looking to catch up with Carbon Racer to the inside right now. Henner's not really utilizing too much of his own battery. Maka will squeeze through. Pressure rubber right now paying off. Henner's with a very good exit there as the safety car. What has happened to cause the safety car? Yasko is out of the race. That would appear to be in Sector 2. Very interesting. Wisp coming in. Yep, no doubt. I think everybody comes in here. Dark's going to be super happy. Maybe not. Did he get anything for that?
What happened there? Did he not just tap him? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that that was interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, lap 21, safety cars deployed. Everybody's coming in for a nice, fresh set of rubber. And, well, Artex has himself a bit of an issue called a three-second time penalty in his fight against Wisp. I have to say, that's a little bit of a thorn in his side. However, however, there's still plenty of racing left, which means that Wisp can very well, just the same as we've seen a majority of the drivers on the grid take penalties, Wisp can very well just take a penalty, equalize the separation, between the pair. That is a gamble. And it could very well be wishful thinking if you're Artex. But it is possible. Penalties are quite something to see here. Henners is leading that that race. A lot of eyes right now on this fight for the win. A lot of eyes were on Carbon Racer as he took pole position, but Wisp had an absolute rocket launch off the line. Safety car saying it's on the way in as we come through the final section of circuit. This is a tricky restart here, and the big question is when is Wisp going to go? Hard to keep temperature into your tires through this section as well. Gradually pushing that throttle. There has been a five-second penalty awarded to Pookie. We are away here. Dark with a really good exit. Trying to find cries immediately off this race restart. Enters behind on Jose Manuel. Dark and cries right now. Still wheel to wheel. Through turns one and two. Now three. Cries through. Carbon Racer, fifth position, looking to hunt down fourth. Jose Manuel and Henners are wheel to wheel right now. Henners on the outside. The house of Rackety off wide there. There's been an issue. That's Gabizim. Gabizim has gone round and he has spun that car into the rear of this grid. Dark struggling on this race restart right now massively as Henners is on his inside left. Pushing for that sixth position. It's wheel to wheel right now. It's going to be inside back through for the Haas. Wide for Henry. 
A little bit of shoving going on between the pair wheel to wheel. Ooh, a big shove potentially or a snap coming out of the power for the Haas is going to lose him not one but two positions as Kane navigates through. McLaren now enters tight between this pair. Very tight. Almost getting locked up there between the two. Not a lot of battery in it for Dark right now. Edu and Sid now. Edu. What's happened here? Uh oh, there's a big issue. Multiple drivers coming together for some contact. Sid losing out most overall here, dropping to 17th position. Pookie and Jean are wheel to wheel. Is it nearly three drivers abreast there? It almost was. Settling down just a little bit at the front end. 1.4 seconds the gap for Wisp and Artex right now. Wisp really showing a great pace around here. Max O'Connor, three-second time penalty. A lot of time penalties through on this grid. You're almost guaranteed position gains if you don't have one right now. Quite the view here is... Horizon Carbon Racer Exchange, excuse me. Back to Maka. Kane, Jose, everybody's here. Oh my, there was so much between these guys through turn one and two. Maka looking for Dark. He's got Henners right in front of him. Kane and Jose, they're still together. Dark, 21 seconds, takes lead over uh, Henners <laughs> in the penalty bout and unfortunately calls it a finish to his race. So Henners is back in the lead. Of the penalty race, that is. And by no means should you ever want to win that race. Oh, and that's Jose Manuel. And Hanner's contact there. And there is just nothing between those two right there that they can do about that. Henry kind of just had to stop the car there.
Gabby Zim looking for Max O'Connor. A touch of contact. Max O'Connor holding ninth. Penalties in it for these guys, but everyone wanting position. Gabizum to the inside now. This is bold for Pookie. Around the outside of Max O'Connor. A little bit of contact there. Oh, this is nasty. Wisp currently holding fastest lap 16 218. Twenty nine of thirty six watching cries hunt down carbon racer for the third position. Mediums versus softs and a penalty in it for carbon. Looking good for cries. Entering lap 30 behind Wisp right now. Artex, three seconds on the rear of the race leader. Carbon Racer, three seconds on the rear of Artex. And it is now Cries who will take third position with ease ahead of Carbon Racer. Solid race unfolding here. Strategy in play. A couple of penalties on the board. More than a couple if you're Henry. Henner is a big issue there with his front wing. Jose Manuel picks up three seconds. Pookie and Bacco right now fronts to rears for the Ferrari. Tight, tight, tight coming into turn four. A very nice move here for the Ferrari to hold it around the outside. Ooh, this is very intense racing as Max O'Connor enters, nobody really giving an inch. 
Max O'Connor picks up three seconds. Pookie picks up three se three seconds. Three seconds. You get a three second, and you get a three. Track is over there. Back row, Max O'Connor. This might go three wide here. Does he look for it? Pookie thinks better of it. Patience. P9 now for Max. Back row holds 10th. Does this give Pookie a good exit? Well, that was a beautiful exit, I have to say. But this is what we saw last time. Back row likes to hold this line off tight. move there for Pookie. Carbon race right now doing everything he can to really push cries for that final position on the podium. Up 34 of 36 now. A push for Carbon Racer could be in the works here. DRS assisted looking at the McLaren. Trying to line things up for turns two and three and cries. Doesn't line things up enough for himself. Takes three seconds. That is a tough, tough situation to find yourself in just a few laps from the end of a race. Goes Carbon. Lining up a move and an opportunity for third position here. And this is all about position considering these guys now they both have three seconds. Carbon Racer going to be feeling pretty good about that as there's a yellow flag for now the other Alpha Tauri. That's Jean in and around the same area where we saw Yasko struggle earlier.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final lap of the evening here in Mexico as Wisp is 5.8 seconds leading Artex. Artex, 1.7 seconds the gap between him and Carbon Racer. Carbon Racer in third position with Cries on his rear looking for a move to the outside as we come into turn one. That is going to be a move done and dusted for the McLaren here on the mediums. Maka, can I wheel the wheel? Maka holding on to fifth right now with everything he's got. Wisp now collecting the fireworks, coming through to take home a victory in the Alfa Romeo from second position. The Swedish racer Wisp takes the checkered flag for a successful race here around Mexico City as our Texan cries will cross second and third respectively with Carbon Racer and fourth Kane. Wheel the wheel with Maka as we come through the final turn. Maka will finish six, sixth on the rear of Kane. And we have Idu in 7th position, Puki in 8th. Max O'Connor, ninth, and there's a big drop as penalties start to shift things. What a race. Thrilling race, of course. Very, very good action. I actually really enjoyed seeing this one with Wisp coming in from second position, taking a very consistent victory here. Artex, second position finish for him, and then Cries in third. Very solid racing. Absolutely loved it. Fastest lap in the end, 15 8 4 3. Jean took that away from the top 10. Alrighty. Okay. Well, that is going to wrap it up for tonight's racing broadcast. Of course, my name is Strifium here, filling in for Domi and Psycho. I personally, unfortunately, don't have a chance to handle any interviews tonight because I am just filling in and I got to run. But with that said, I'm really excited to join you for tonight's America's Tier 1 racing action. That's at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 a.m. for those of you that are joining us in the UK. 3 a.m. Central, so maybe you can come and visit the Tier 1 Americas division and myself and Seb on the commentary, but I just want to wish everybody a fantastic, fantastic evening as I've got to go, but I'm really excited to have been back to commentate this Tier 3 race, and thank you everybody for coming through to watch, as well as thank you to everybody that came through, put on a spectacular race for us in this grid, and another big shout out to Wisp for a spectacular, consistent win in this race, just a solid, solid campaign here for round 14, and with that said, everybody, my name is Trifium, and that's going to wrap up this racing broadcast for tonight. Ciao, ciao for now.